Booyah. Cool. So we got the video to work and the artwork on the wheel itself. What's up internet? Today we're going to do a tutorial on how to get the 32 gigabyte attract mode on your Retro Pi. Now this is done with a 32 gigabyte micro SD, so this is easier and less expensive than 128. However, it's going to take you three times longer to set up, if not more. So it's not as cool as a 128 gigabyte track mode. So if you have the money, definitely go and do the 128. But if you want to do the 32, here's your option here. Go ahead and copy the magnet link, download the file. It should be a 32 gigabyte file. It should look like this, a track mode RetroPie 4.1. It does have the latest version of RetroPie as of today, 12.6. 16 and then once you extract it it should look something like this you should have a readme file on a 32 gigabyte image file go ahead and uh, load up win32 disk imager install it if you don't and click this little folder here you just want to make sure you're on the correct device which is your micro sd card uh, if you have it on a hard drive or something like that you could actually format your hard drive so make sure you have the right image you'll click this file button here once you're in explorer go ahead and click your attract mode image open write it should ask you writing to a physical device can corrupt the device that's fine yes you are doing it correctly and now this is going to take somewhere between 10 and 45 minutes all right it should say write successful and press ok we can go ahead and close out and now we're going to take out the micro sd from our computer we're now going to take our 32 gigabyte sd and plug it into our pi you should be able to see the logo of the SD facing down when the Pi is upright. And it's not really a clicking in mechanism like a spring loaded, it just goes straight in. All right, we have it in our, in our Pi, and now we're gonna launch the Pi for the first time. This should be the first screen you see. It will take a few moments till you see it, and once it comes up, it will take a, a many moments as well till it clears off. It will default into emulation station, not a track mode. You have to set up the controller and emulation station, and then you can launch a track mode. Again, this image has no ROMs on it. So you need to load ROMs, you need to set up your Wi-Fi, and you need to do any other customization you want to this image. It's not going to be pre-done for you. Uh, you can go into RetroPie and go ahead and switch to a track mode. Okay, and as you can see, it, so it comes pre, pre um, As you can see, it comes pre-installed with um, the video preview of the actual system. But when you click into the system itself, like Super Nintendo, for example, you have no ROMs loaded. I'm pressing up and down. You can see it trying to switch the click wheel, but there's no ROMs to switch through. There's a couple ways to get your ROMs onto the system. The easiest is probably through Wi-Fi. So in order to do that, you want to go back into Emulation Station. Once you're in Emulation Station, go ahead and go to RetroPie. Go to RetroPie Setup. And then within setup, there should be a set up your Wi-Fi. So let's go ahead and press C for configure and tools. And you're going to scroll all the way down to see Wi-Fi 830. Go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi. Once you find your local Wi-Fi, it should prompt you to enter your password. Enter your password. You should see a screen like this where it starts connecting. Once you're on the Wi-Fi, go ahead and exit out of the, out of the RetroPie setup. And we want to go ahead and show our IP address. And this is when you should take out your smartphone and go ahead and take a picture of your IP address. Okay, so I have two Windows Explorers open right now. One is to connect to the RetroPie. The other is a folder filled with ROMs. And this particular ROM is NES, the original Nintendo system. You can actually do uh, backslash backslash and then the word RetroPie. And you might not even need your IP address that'll often connect you directly to your Raspberry Pi and see that worked for me on my network. If that doesn't work, you wanna go ahead and enter in the IP address here. So one, and then just blah, 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 whatever your IP is. And you should see a screen exactly like this. Now, this is where things get a little tricky. It's easy to, if you just wanna go into ROMs, just find the system you want and go ahead and unzip, if it's a zip, unzip it to the NES or just drag them right over and you have your NES ROMs. The thing is, it's not all gonna match up. For example, this Nintendo folder I have here is something I just found online. It's like, oh, you know, a thousand NES ROMs. And you'll notice that the names here don't necessarily match the names of the 
of the preview videos here. So for example, the, the airplane game 1943, the Battle of Midway, on this particular folder, they just call it 1943, and when you extract it, it just comes out as the NES. So if I was just to transfer this over to the Pi, if I go back to the Pi and I just go into the ROMs and I just drop the ROM straight in there, it's not going to be able to scrape the box art because this does not match the same file name. What I would need to do is copy this file name, which is also the same file name for the, for the preview video here as well. And you can see this is the video it'll play. So that's the video it would play during in the attract mode. So what we need to do is rename this file first to the exact same file name that the box art and the snap wheel video uh, will play. So for this particular, what I'm doing here with this NES uh, collection of ROMs is a lot of the stuff I'll be doing, um, a lot of the games I'm putting on here, I have to rename. And that's going to be a big pain. There may be some collections of ROMs that are already done. Um, but for this one, I have to do this. And some of you might have to do this as well. I'm going to leave Super Mario Brothers 3 as is. The original Super Mario Brothers, though, I would like it to, to preview. So let's go scroll down to there. Super Mario Brothers. There it is. They call it Super Mario Brothers World for the attract mode, for this 32 gigabyte attract mode. So let's go ahead and rename this. Okay, so at this point, it should have it, it just transferred all that over the network. If you were to do, you know, N Nintendo 64, you would just drag them here again. Make sure the box art file name matches the ROM file name. Uh, if you wanted to do Super Nintendo, you just put it in SNES, Sega Genesis, Mega Drive, etc., etc. You get the deal. It's going to be the same for all the systems. The main thing here, though, is you need to match the box art file name to the ROM file name. And once you have that done, you should be able to go back to your Pi. Once you transferred the ROMs over the network, go ahead and go into your emulation station. And on this screen, press the start button on your controller. And all you need to do is reset emulation station. So let's go ahead and restart. Yes. Now that we restarted, you can see that I transferred those four games. And now here they are. Great. But the main thing we want to see is if it now works for a track mode. So let's go ahead and switch back into a track mode. Yeah, you see it's still empty. So what we actually have to do is go into the track mode menu and you have to scrape it. So we'll go press tab to configure, tab. I'm using a keyboard now and uh, go into um, Go into emulators and we did the NES, so NES, look at that, the first one we saw. And we want to go ahead and scrape this, which is somewhere in here. So here we go, generate collection ROM list, let's go ahead and yes, okay. And then uh, we want to go ahead and scrape the artwork as well. So now we're telling it to get those ROMs as well as get the artwork for the ROMs for the, um, for the and as you can see it's scraped 13 artwork files, so let's see what happens with that. So let's go ahead and go back, escape, escape, and uh, now we're back on the wheel. When we're on the wheel, let's go back to Nintendo, let's see if it worked. Booyah! Cool! So we got the video to work and the artwork on the wheel itself. If we go up to Super Mario Bros. 3, as you can see, remember, I did not rename Super Mario Brothers 3. So the name does not match up to the video file. So therefore, we're only seeing a JPEG, a screenshot, where if we had changed the, the file name, we would have had uh, the video playing. We did do it for Mario Brothers 1, though, remember? And there we go. The video works. So if this is the ROM you want, you'll just go ahead and click A, and it should launch the ROM. And there we go. If you could support this channel, we would really appreciate it. Please give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and in the description of the video, you'll notice some Amazon referral links. If you can buy the SD card through our Amazon referral, it's going to cost you the same. What happens is Amazon does give us a little kickback. So if you are going to buy the 32 gigabyte or the 128, there'll be links in the description uh, below, and that'll help our channel out, give us a couple bucks. So if you could, 
get, do go ahead and support us that way. Otherwise, if you have any questions, please comment below. Thanks again, and until next time.